Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on data and resources for teaching. I'm Maureen Haker, and I teach research methods at University of Suffolk within the Childhood Studies program. And I've worked at the UK Data Service for nearly seven years. My colleague, Patty, um, who is here as well, is a research associate at the University of Manchester, and she joined the UK Data Service about 18 months ago. So today's webinar is all about resources that the UK Data Service have available for teachers. Um, but before we get into the actual resources, I just wanted to first go over very briefly a bit about why we're talking about teaching with data today and how it fits with research-led teaching, which is increasingly important to universities. From there, I'll hand over to Patty, who's going to talk about quantitative resources and signpost you to what's available through the UK Data Service. Finally, Patty's gonna hand back to me and I'll do the same, but for qualitative data. We aim to talk for around 30 minutes in total, and then we have time at the end for any questions. Please use the chat facility in your menu if you have any questions and you can just type them as they occur to you, and we'll address all of those questions at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, we will jump right in. Um, over the past decade, data services, like the UK Data Service, has seen a change in the relationship with the education sector, and specifically a growing reuse of data for teaching purposes. For example, in 2016, Bishop and Kulalumi analyzed the reuse of qualitative data sets at the UK Data Service and found that 77% of data sets were reused for teaching and learning purposes. So, you know, three quarters of the downloads of qualitative data sets ended up being used in the classroom, which is quite significant. And the relationship between archives and higher education is beneficial for everyone. Teachers who have reused data have commented how it enhances learning and is effective in engaging student interests. And for archives and data services, that reuse has a clear impact on the reach and significance of our data sets. Some archives have gone as far as to develop specific education strategies, such as the National Archives 2018, a guide to collaboration between archives and higher education, which explores methods for further outreach and engagement with undergraduate and postgraduate students. The drive to reuse data hasn't just come out of data services, though. Higher education has had its own goal to provide research-informed teaching since at least the 1960s, if not actually a bit earlier. And the thought at the time was that pedagogy that was based on research resulted in better learning. Of course, this seems to be an obvious point to make. But this teaching research nexus continued to spur questions about how to bring research and its data into the classroom. And it became clear that this was actually a defining feature of university. And it you know, that universities needed to bring together research and teaching in this sort of way. In the early 2000s, Healy and Jenkins, uh, who published in 2009, were funded by the Higher Education Funding uh, Council for England, or some of you might know that as HEFKE, and they modeled four types of research-informed teaching. So there's research-led, which is learning about research within your discipline, there's research tutored, or you know, engaging in research discussion. There's research oriented, which is focused on developing research and inquiry skills. And then there's research based, which is actually undertaking research and inquiry. Healy and Jenkins emphasize that those latter two, the research oriented and the research based, um, those latter two methods of research informed teaching encourage students to actively immerse themselves in research activities rather than just being these passive recipients of information that is you know derived from research and so in that sort of way it was deemed a little bit more desirable and it's this point that is perhaps really important it's not enough just to talk about research or even further still using evidence-based teaching methods but rather students need to also immerse themselves in developing research skills. Consequently, in 2018, when the Teaching Excellence Framework, or some of you may know this as the TEF, was introduced in the UK, research-informed teaching, as it was defined by Healy and Jenkins, became a commendation within its grading. 
And there's a huge range of ways that institutions have demonstrated research informed teaching. Some draw attention to how teaching was involved in high quality research, while others drew up strategies which built research based and research informed curricula. The, you know, what we might think of as perhaps traditional or the more usual way of demonstrating a link between teaching and research is to have students take a research methods module and subsequently complete some sort of small scale research project within their mandatory classes. However, this approach also draws a lot of critique with the argument that simply carrying out a research task isolated from the research design and epistemological justification which motivates it does not necessarily teach the most important aspects of research or even about the impact that research has on knowledge creation. And finally, and this is where we get to, you know, the resources that we hold for teaching. The UK Data Service can help with this goal by providing resource, resources which help students develop specific research skills, while at the same time not losing precious class time in the design and collection of data in classes which aren't devoted to, you know, dissertation or, or research methods. It offers a way of balancing class time spent on research tasks and class time spent on reflecting on the data's meaning and impact. As this is something that data services are more and more aware of, we've come a long way in developing the resources for teachers to help engage students in a variety of subjects and to help students refine their own skill set. And at this point, I just want to mention one of our avid reusers of data, Jo Haynes, and her experience of reusing data with her postgraduate students. So she was designing a 12 week course on qualitative analysis and she needed a way for her students to focus on the analysis of the data rather than the collection of the data. So she asked students to undertake a secondary analysis assignment from a selected number of data sets that were held at the UK Data Service. As part of this assessment, Haynes explained that the students had the choice to either come up with an original research question or to find a new way to work with the data. And part of the motivation to have students reuse data rather than to collect their own was to obviously, you know, get them to spend more time developing their analytical skills. But additionally, she found that students benefited from having to generate multiple perspectives of their, their chosen data set and craft diverse arguments and findings uh, about the data, sometimes beyond what the original researchers found. And Haynes noted that it was also a really good way to engage in research that has already been done and to reach a critical dialogue with British research. The module was seen as a success, um, even resulting in one of Haynes's uh, students publishing her results. And you can see a link to it here on the, uh, on the slide. So in this publication, A Tale of Two Analyses, Haynes reflects with Jones, who was a student, um, on the two analyses that were produced within the class, as well as some of the deeper understandings of conducting research that came out of reusing data. Although students were working with just a selected sample curated specifically for learning purposes, Jones was still able to find similar themes as the original investigator. And this is what they found quite interesting, the fact that you could take a subset and still find the same sorts of themes as the larger data set. So her publication expands on some of those substantive similarities, as well as some of the differences she found um, between her analysis and the analysis of the original investigator. Haynes and Jones then reflect on the methodology of reusing uh, data as a method itself. So it's a, it's a really uh, you know, impressive read from students work and it really demonstrates the level of reflection and critical thinking that goes on when data is being reused in the, uh, in the classroom in this sort of way. So from here, I'm going to pass over to Patty, who's going to share a little bit more about teaching resources that are derived from quantitative data sets. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to start by talking to you about our quantitative data. So the UK Data Service has hundreds of data sets that could be used for teaching. However, many of the data sets are large and complex, so it may not be ideal for teaching students who are new to data analysis. 
However, we have a large selection of teaching data sets, and these can be very easily accessed and downloaded from the UK Data Service catalogue. Most of the teaching data sets require registration and agreeing with um, an end user license. If you're using data for teaching purposes, this should be specified when you download the data. And students also need to be made aware of and agree to the end user license terms. Um, currently, the most common way for teaching with safeguarded data like this is to ask students to sign the access agreement for teaching. However, this process is currently under review, so the most recent guidelines will always be available on our website under Teaching with Data. So I just wanted to cover that before we um, moved on. But also note that we have a smaller amount of open teaching data sets that don't require registration. However, these data sets tend to use older data and it's a smaller, more limited data set. Um, you can also use census data for teaching. And much of our data is available to explore online using Nestar. Our search engine is on our homepage, and you can see it here on this slide. And it is one way to find our teaching data sets. Just simply type teaching data set in the search engine, and results will come up. And this is an example of search results. We have a wide variety of teaching data sets, which cover topics such as health, crime, and social and political attitudes. Some of the most notable teaching data sets we hold have been created from the Labour Force Survey, uh, the English Housing Survey, Crime Survey for England and Wales, and the Health Survey for England. Um, these data sets are regularly updated. The ones shown on the screen here aren't necessarily the most recent. Um, for example, I've just finished creating a teaching data set using the English Housing Survey data from 2018 to 2019, and this is about to be released. Uh, so using teaching data is very much about getting students to engage with real topical data in the classroom. If you want to download any of these teaching data sets, you select the record uh, that you're interested in and you'll be taken to that data set catalogue record. And so from the catalogue record, you can find out more about the teaching data set. Under the document, uh, documentation tab, there will be a user guide. Uh, which is accessible um, to students. And to download the data, you simply click on the Access Data button, the purple button in the corner, and you'll be redirected to your account where you can download the data and add it to your teaching project. Um, as mentioned, apart from the small selection of open data sets, you'll need to be registered with the UK Data Service to access the data. If you haven't already registered, it's a very quick process and you'll be able to access the data extremely quickly. It's also worth noting that some of our data sets can be analysed online via the UK Data Services Data Analysis Interface, which is called NESTAR. Online analysis is available when there is an access online button, um, such as that you can see here on the bottom of the page. All you need to do is click on that button and you'll be taken directly to the data set which you've selected in Nestar. And this is what Nestar looks like. In Nestar, you can conduct um, exploratory analysis with students and you can also conduct cross tabulations and correlation analysis. This can be very easily done by clicking on each of the relevant tabs at the top of the screen. Uh, you can see we have tabs for description, tabulation and analysis. It's currently showing the description tab and you can see that we have the data open for the crime survey for England and Wales 2013-2014 and that description gives you a bit more detail about the data set. Uh, it's worth noting that even though we've clicked through onto the crime survey for England and Wales in this instance, you can see on the left you have a large list of all the teaching data sets that are available on Nestar for analysis and so you can scroll through that a list on the left to see what else is available, view the descriptions and so on. Um, next I'm going to cover the quantitative resources for teaching. Uh, firstly we're going to look at teach, uh, to say teaching ideas which are short guides to help make lesson planning more efficient. Guides include practical exercises students can do using data available from the UK Data Service to help them learn quantitative methods. Um, secondly, we have a range of methods and software guides. These are detailed guides providing information on a range of research methods and how to use software such as SPSS, Data and R. Third, we have uh, dataset guides. 
these guides are about using data from surveys and international data sets from organizations such as the OECD and the World Bank. And finally, we have some recently developed a short ebooks. These quantitative methods ebooks and accompanying quizzes are for direct use in teaching students or for self study. They aim to build skills in quantitative methods and statistical software and use the Living Costs and Food Survey. The ebooks have been developed through a collaboration with the UK Data Service, the National Centre for Research Methods, and the Centre for Multi Level Modelling at the University of Bristol. So, using SPSS, they are designed uh, for direct use in teaching undergraduate students quantitative methods, including looking at descriptives, correlation, and multiple regression. But today, as an example, I'm going to focus on some of the guides that we have. We have guides on data management software and survey data but i want to draw your attention to the software guides on statistical packages and we have three of these here at the uk data service what is data what is spss 20 for windows and using r to analyze key uk surveys as an example of our guides i'm going to focus here on what is spss for windows and if you click on what is spss you'll be taken directly to the uh, what is SPSS PDF guide, which looks like this. Um, this guide is a really fantastic resource which introduces students to the software of SPSS, or it can also be used by students when refreshing their own software skills before conducting any data analysis. And as you can see from the contents page to the guide, it covers key topics such as viewing the data in SPSS and exploratory data analysis data manipulation, using hierarchical data, as well as linking and merging files. It is very much a step-by-step -step guide, and throughout it uses one of the main surveys that we have, which is the British Social Attitudes Survey. The guide is very easy to follow for both students and for teachers, and our experience is that students really like using this guide because it walks them through the process of opening the data and those early stages of data analysis. And all our other software guides, so the data guide and also the R guide, follow the same format as this one. Um, finally, I'm just going to introduce you to what we call our student resources pages. And I don't want you um, for that title to throw you off here, as the student pages, including the using survey data guide, are a really good resource for teaching as well. And I recommend that you draw your students towards it. The data skills modules are another very good resource for students. Uh, this page shows a screenshot of the Using Survey Data Guide. The Using Survey Data Guide uh, principally uses the crime survey for England and Wales. And again, similar to the SPSS guide, it walks students through the initial stages of data analysis. So, for example, you can see potential research topics and questions, levels of measurements, uh, getting started with survey data, data analysis, and reporting your results. And again, the guide is very easy to use. Uh, and just on the data skills modules, we have three online data skills modules, and these are introductory level interactive models uh, modules, and they're designed for users who want to gain a better understanding of the key aspects of survey, longitudinal, and aggregate data. So modules can be conducted in your own time and you're able to dip in and out when needed. The modules give you an introduction to key aspects of the data using short instructional videos, interactive quizzes and activities which use um, open access software, software where possible. And each module takes about two hours to complete. And so it's worth dipping in and out of those to find uh, examples of explaining key concepts that may help your students. And I just want to mention before I pass back to Maureen that uh, our website is currently being updated and it is going to look quite different from the end of October. So if you're used to using it um, or if you go to it after today, it will look quite different uh, in a couple of months or a few weeks time really. Um, but it should be quite easy to use and the data catalogue will remain the same and you will find all of the resources we've talked about under a tab for training and events, which will also have a link from the main page. So that's all I was going to say. So I'm going to pass you back uh, to Maureen now to talk about qualitative data and resources. 
So the UK Data Service also has a range of qualitative teaching resources. So right now, um, you can view these by going to the Use Data tab at the top, and then you go down to Student Resources, and here I've circled where we have our qualitative and mixed methods resources. So some of these are intended for students to explore themselves, so they're self-led resources with activity stops. Others are slightly more complicated ideas, so they're more like tutor-led teaching packs with discussion questions and hints for lecturers, that sort of thing. And this is just another view sort of further down the list. And you can see that there's a variety of topics. Some of them are more focused on developing specific research skills, such as our interview methods resource, which compares and contrasts different styles of interviewing. Others focus on the research behind a specific topic, such as our folk devils and moral panics resource. And that resource, you know, for example, it goes into Stan Cohen's works on um, mods and rockers in the 1960s. So you can find a full list online and on the new website that will be under training and events. If you do develop some kind of similar teaching pack yourself and you would like to share it, please let us know because we can publish it online and we can help publicize it. Patty also mentioned teaching data sets, which are, again, these are just data sets that are reduced in size to make them a little bit more manageable for students, or they've been curated around a specific class theme. So we do have a couple of these for qualitative teaching data sets, and these are ones that Joe Haynes has curated and deposited. So you can find these by sorting by data type and qualitative um, once you find the area for uh, teaching data sets. If you've created a teaching data set yourself, so if you've reduced a data set um, and you would like to deposit that, please let us know because we'd be happy to help you archive it and share it and publicize it. So get in touch if you do. And I'm just gonna go back to our um, case study. So we also have some case studies which showcase the various ways that our data has been used. So if you're looking for a little bit of inspiration or some ideas in your teaching, these can be found under the Use Data tab and then go down to Data in Use and you'll see teaching case studies hyperlinked in the text, which brings you to quite a lengthy list of stories explaining the class, the data set that they used, and how the exercise or the assignment was delivered. And again, these will be moved into the uh, training and events area on the new website. If you are wanting a quick way to explore data sets which focus on a specific theme, then our thematic guides might be useful for finding the right kind of data quickly. So you can find these under our Get Data tab, and then you go down to Data by Theme. And the themes include common social characteristics like aging, education, ethnicity, and poverty, as well as current issues like COVID-19 and environment and energy. And when you click through to one of these, you'll see that we've not just assembled, you know, some quick links to seminal research on that theme, but also resources for, you know, analyzing and researching in this area, as well as some other miscellaneous resources that we might have to link to it. Another specific resource to qualitative data that I want to point out is, isn't so much a resource for teaching as it is actually just a feature of the UK Data Service website, and it's called QualiBank. And this is an online tool for searching, browsing, and citing qualitative data. It works a bit like Google, so students would find this quite intuitive to use. And if you're trying to get students to find data for an assignment or a, or a project, you can just type in a keyword like I've done here with typhoid, um, and you press go, and it'll bring back results um, where that keyword has appeared anywhere within the data set. And this is what makes QualiBank perhaps a little bit different from just our data catalog, is the fact that it actually searches through the data itself for that keyword, as opposed to just the catalog page or just the abstract of the data set. So when you click through to one of these results, You'll find at the very top of the page, there's some links to adi uh, additional resources and details about the study of um, where that piece of data actually came from. And if you click on any of those additional resources, it would bring you to the end of the text. And from there, you can see what there is. So perhaps there's an audio of the interview or maybe some photographs that are associated with that interview or the collection. Um, what's really useful about this resource as well is that you can actually cite the data. 
So you'll see in the left-hand margin, right at the top here, there is a Create Citation button. So let's say you've read through this interview and you want to use a very specific excerpt uh, within your writing. All you would need to do is click on that paragraph um, and it would highlight that, that utterance. Um, from there, you would click the Create Citation button and you would magically get a little pop-up window that has generated a citation for that piece of data. And you can see at the very end of that citation, there's a URL. If you were to click on that URL, it would bring you specifically to that paragraph within that interview on QualiBank. Um, so this resource not only makes finding what you're looking for a little bit easier, it also stresses the importance to students of exploring background information and also citing their sources. Finally, I want to mention what we have available for students doing dissertations in their final year. So one of our most recent uh, one of our most recent additions to our guides is dissertations and their data. And this is basically a collection of resources to aid basic data management for an undergraduate or possibly a postgraduate research project. So the PAC provides students with a basic checklist of research data management points. Um, and there's also some templates in there for informed consent, transcription approaches, anonymization plans. And this is a printable PDF. So students are welcome to adopt or use any of the information in there provided they appropriately cite the source within their work. So this is, this is really useful. We brought it to the um, Research Methods Festival at University of, of Bath a couple of years ago, and it was really quite well received. So hopefully students would find this something that is really um, essential while they're doing their dissertations. And following on from that, we also have a UK Data Service Dissertation Award this year. So any undergraduate student who has reused data for their dissertation on a social science topic and has submitted in the 2020, 2021 academic year is eligible to enter. So all winning entries will receive 300 pounds and they'll also be featured on our website, our blog and our newsletter. So there's a little bit more information about the judging and the time frame and those sorts of details on our web pages, and you can see the web page is at the bottom of that slide there.